Hello there, Flip here, and today we'll be talking about Nahida the Dendro Orkon, and we'll be going over her kit, her artifacts, her weapons, and lastly her teams, and where she'll shine in. But do keep in mind this is going to be going off of beta information, and if anything changes I'll update you in the comments. Right off the bat, if you just want a quick TLDR of if she's going to be good or not and if you should pull her, she is really good if you want to play Dendro teams and take them to its ceiling as she will play a lot of Dendro and having a lot of Dendro application is going to be very strong. Also if you have Sino or Nilo, you are then really going to want to pull Nahida as they're like one half of a unit without her. The only time you're playing Dendro teams and Nahida isn't a massive priority is if you're using something like Kitching or Yai Aggravate. She's going to be an upgrade, no denying that, but the difference isn't as big as to other teams. Nahida is going to be best used as a Dendro driver and enabler as she's a catalyst user and can apply a lot of Dendro. So if you only plan to use her purely off field, then again she's still going to be an upgrade but I wouldn't prioritize her in that case. Nahida is also an Archon, meaning that like with all the other Archons so far, there's a high potential she'll be rerun in a few patches regardless. So yeah, you can make a more informed decision then, or wait a week into her banner and a lot more opinions and calculations will be out. And lastly, before we dive into Nahida's kit and how it works, as well as how to build her, as usual, if at any point during the video you're entertained or informed, make sure to drop a like and even consider subscribing, as I talk about various topics on Genshin's meta, and I will try to keep you updated on drastic meta shifts and misconceptions surrounding characters. Now let's talk about Nahida's kit. So our little radish is going to have two main roles, a dendro support and then either as an own field driver or off field damage dealer and applicator. Her basic attacks are actually going to be quite good as they are not only fast but they are dendro infused, meaning that if you do decide to use her as a driver, you get a lot of dendro applications limited by her internal cooldown, which should be standard on her normal attacks. So yeah, nothing really special there with her ICD. Moving on to her skill, it has two different versions. A tap version which will just let out a pulse of Dendro in an area that will apply Dendro and leave up to 8 enemies with a mark called the Seed of Skanda. And with the hold variant, it will lift Nahida up into the air as she adds up to 8 enemies to her cringe compilation as you can aim and mark targets. And while she's in this state, she'll have a massive amount of interrupt resistance, but you can only stay in this aiming mode for up to 5 seconds. Now the interesting thing about her skill are the Seeds of Skanda that will activate and deal and apply Dendro damage based on 2 conditions. Either when you trigger any reaction on an opponent affected by this mark, or a dendro core hits them like a hyper bloom or burgeon. The thing about it is that it does sort of have an ICD that lines up with standard ICD which is 2.5 seconds. Oh yeah, also to clarify, opponents with the mark on them will be linked by other opponents with the mark, and if they are close, triggering a reaction on one of them will apply dendro and deal dendro damage to all opponents linked. And just to add another fucking cherry on top of what this skill can do, it also lasts 25 seconds. So yeah, this is why if you play Sino, you are really going to want a Nahida. It also has a quite short cooldown of 6 seconds, which is good as it is a guaranteed Dendro application. Now onto what Nahida's burst does. <laughs> it leaves a massive stadium, almost the size of an entire abyss floor because why not? Let's just give this shrimp the best features and the best elemental burst animation because <laughs> Anyways, it creates this massive dome and thankfully similar to Barber's Burst, this actually just does no damage at all. It doesn't even apply Dendro, it will just give a buff to Nahida's mark. And just so you know, this burst has a 50 energy cost and will last 15 seconds as a base and has a cooldown of 13 seconds from activation, meaning you can get 100% uptime with good enough energy. Now back onto what it does, when inside the Shrine of Maya, you will get different buffs depending on what elements your party consists of. A pyro character in your team will increase the damage of Nahida's mark, an electro character will speed up how fast you can proc the mark, so you can proc it faster than the 2.5 seconds ICD, and lastly a hydro character will extend the duration of the shrine. And yes, these buffs are stackable so you can have both the duration increase with hydro and a pyro increase for damage. Not only that, but having up to two characters of the same element also gives you a buff. So assuming a talent level 10 Nahida, you will get a 26.78% damage bonus to your mark for one pyro character, and a 40.18 bonus for two pyro characters. The mark interval will be reduced down to 2.05 seconds for one electro character, and 1.83 seconds for two electro characters. The duration of the elemental burst will be increased to 21.02 seconds. I don't know why they can't just say 21, anyways and the 24.03 duration with 2 Hydro characters. 
And for energy requirements, if you want to burst every rotation, then her energy will range from 140 to 160 if you're using her completely off field, which can be lowered even further if she's going to be on field the majority of the time. And that's about it for her burst, let's go over her passives. Nahida's Ascension 1 passive will make it so that when you activate her burst, each character in the party when on field will gain bonus elemental mastery based on 25% of the character with the highest elemental mastery. And this will most likely be the Onomo character of the team, Nahida herself, or a Bloom trigger for Burgeon or Hyper Bloom. And you can't give any more than 250 elemental mastery, so with basic math it caps out a thousand elemental mastery that the character needs to have for the maximum bonus. So for every 100 EM is 25 more elemental mastery given, and her ascension 4 passive will convert Nahida's own elemental mastery over 200 into crit rate and damage percent. So for every 100 points of elemental mastery over 200, Nahida will get 10% damage bonus and 3% crit rate. And this will cap out at 800 points of elemental mastery over 200, so 1000 EM basically. And for the restrictions, you can't go any further than 80% damage bonus and 24% crit rate. And this passive will actually tie into her artifact stats. So now that we are done with the basics of her kit, let's talk about artifacts. Okay, so with artifacts for Nahida for sets, this is quite simple. If there's a Deepwood holder on the team, then give Nahida a Gilded Dreams or a two-piece two-piece mix of Gilded Dreams and Deepwood. But if there's no Deepwood holder on the team, then it will be Nahida. In most cases, there won't be be someone that can hold Deepwood over another worthwhile set, so a lot of the time will be better to give it to Nahida. And that was the simple part. Now for main stats, regardless of the situation, Nahida is always going to run an Elemental Mastery Sands. Uh, heh, okay. There are going to be 4 set scenarios with Nahida. There is an on-field Quicken Driver, off-field Quicken Damage Dealer, on-field Bloom Team Driver, and then off-field Bloom Team Damage Dealer. And then depending on these scenarios, Nahida's either going to want to use a Dendro Damage Goblet or EM Goblet, Crit Circlet or EM Circlet. For on-field Quicken teams when Nahida is driving this team, since she will be normal attacking frequently which does not scale with EM, and because she will be benefiting from her Ascension 1 passive, she can forego using an EM Circlet or EM Goblet here. So using EM Dendro Crit or EM EM Crit isn't a bad option. But when she is completely off field for a Sino Aggravate team, just use full EM and build crit and substats as she won't be on field benefiting from her passive. So it's very unlikely you will go over a thousand EM which is the cap from her ascension for benefit. And then for Hyper Bloom and Burgeon teams if you're using Nahida as an on field driver, EM damage EM or EM EM crit would be the best main stats to use. And the gap between them is like less than 1% so again use whatever has better subs. And hell, since she's doing a lot more normals here too, even the EM damage crit build is good here as well. The only thing that may change things is if you're using a Nilo Bloom team in which you want to build Nahida with full elemental mastery regardless, as she'll be triggering one fourth of the blooms with two targets and 100% of the blooms in single target. So even going over a thousand EM isn't bad to do here. And the last scenario for Nahida is going to end up being a Bloom team where you're using her off field. But that will most likely not really happen and it again comes down to substats. For weapons, Nahida basically has 7 options and anything I don't mention is either not worth running or not worth pulling. Her signature weapon and yes her signature weapon is her best in slot for almost all teams by around 5-10% to for her own personal damage output. It's actually a slightly lower gain from other 5 star weapons so I wouldn't really recommend going for it and it's not really a must have weapon. Now let's talk about Magic Guide. Magic Guide not only gives elemental mastery to Nahida but on Bloom teams and Aggravate teams where Nahida is not driving and you can get constant electro or hydro on the enemy, you get a good benefit from the weapon passive which increases damage if enemies are affected with hydro or electro. Also the low base attack doesn't really matter as Nahida doesn't care that much about it especially off field. If you do have some craftables to spare and are going to be using Nahida on field, out or 5 Mapamere will be better than Magic Guide and is also free to play obtainable and it also just gives you a free 32% damage bonus and also doesn't get hindered by uptime issues like the Magic Guide can run into. And the last Elemental Mastery book to cover will be the Sacrificial Fragments. The refinement of it doesn't really matter. It is basically just an EM stat stick and can help you frontload spreads on a quickened enemy. Since its passive is not that great unless you are trying to frontload damage, it actually does slightly lose out to magic guide depending on the team, but it's still a decent option. Now onto crit weapons, Kagura is going to be great if you have it, but it's not worth rolling for Nahida. 
with Zith is also going to be a decent weapon for our malnourished Archon because it's a good crit stat stick and if you're using Nahida on field, all of the passive effects are going to be good for her. It does actually lose out to other options if you don't end up killing everything in one rotation though. If you do have some money to spend or you picked the wrong weapon by accident for the battle pass, then a solar pull especially with high refinements is also going to be good on Nahida being a crit stat stick, increasing her damage from her normal skill and burst. The only limiting thing is that you have to use Nahida as a driver, but you do want to do that anyways. And now for supports of weapons, we have Hakushin and Favonius, which both also give an ER substat. Okay, with Hakushin, for overall team damage and because you do want to burst every rotation on Quicken teams, which is the only place you would really use Hakushin, on paper it should be a good option, but the only problem is that spread itself isn't actually an Electra reaction, so Nahida proking spread won't refresh Hakushin's buff. The only way for Nahida to actually consistently get Hakushin buffs is to proc Quicken, which you can have some troubles doing, especially if you are quick swapping her. So even though Hakushin is good, it probably won't be worth using for Nahida, and on Quicken teams you can also just put Hakushin on Sucrose. And lastly, Favonius Codex will actually be good for teams with extremely tight and short rotations like Kitching Aggravate teams, because as you are constantly quick swapping and bursting, it requires a high amount of energy on all your characters. So to summarize, Magic Guide, a High Refines Mapamare, Widzith or Solar Pearl, and Favonius will all be great weapons for your Dendro Baby. And now let's cover her teams. I don't really want to cover already existing Dendro archetypes. As I said in the beginning of the video, the best thing about Nahida is the fact that she's able to drive and enable Dendro teams in that way, and I feel like it's a waste of Nahida's potential to pull her and use her as an off-field applicator. So yes, I know and Nahida are going to work great together. Yai, Kiching, Raiden, and Aggravate all work great too. Sucrose Hyperbloom will also be receiving an upgrade. Basically any Dendro team currently just replace Kole or DMC with Nahida and you will get an upgrade. Okay so now talking about Nahida as an on-field driver and enabler, you have first Hyperbloom which also has two routes. Either double Electro Hyperbloom using an Electro who will trigger the seeds like Raiden or Kuki built with full elemental mastery and an Electro who won't trigger the seeds usually like Fischl or Beidou. And then there is double Hydro Hyperbloom using Jingchou and Yulan. These teams give you an illegal amount of single target damage output for how easy they are to play, and yes it may sound cursed, but using no burst, full elemental mastery Raiden is worth it. Moving on from Hyperbloom there is Burgeon, now of which can only be really triggered by Toma. So Nahida, Toma, a Hydro unit and a character that won't trigger the seeds like Fischl because there's literally no one else to put in the last slot, and Fischl allows for more reactions and more seeds, so why not? Also Nilo Bloom teams, Nilo, Kokomi, Yolan or Jingcho, and lastly Nahida. In single target, just because of how many Hydro applications there are, Nahida will almost always be the trigger for the blooms. But as more targets get added, more blooms will be proked by different characters. And you can also exchange Kokomi on this team for Barbara if you don't have her. And yeah, unlike now, it's a really different way to play Nilo Bloom. And then you have aggravate teams where Nahida will drive, which would be something like Nahida, Fischl, Beta or Lisa, and then an off-field Onimo or any sort of mitigation in the last slot. Please don't use Yai for on-field quicken teams with Nahida. Use Yai as the enabler on this team because this way you get more aggravates which will trigger Fischl's A4 more often. Like with Hakushin, since spread does not count as an Electro reaction, Fischl's Ascension 4 won't proc it and losing Fischl's aggravates is really not worth it to be on-field with Nahida, unless she is like hyper invested. These teams won't really be the best extension of Nahida anyways as our options are limited, so do what you will. Overall, Nahida will be the best Dendro character we have currently, not only having the fastest and longest lasting Dendro application, but also shitting out really high numbers as well. If you plan to use Dendro long term then definitely pick her up, there would be no real reason not to. But if you don't plan to have a heavy focus on Dendro then skipping her isn't anything account ruining either. So yeah, that's about it. Hopefully I helped you guys build her and I wish you luck on your pulls. And on that note, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment on your thoughts on Nahida, as I'd love to hear them and I respond to almost every single comment. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Moby is better, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Peace.